Welcome, welcome back to the You Like That podcast. Uh, my name's Jack. I am one half of the You Like That podcast, and I am Adam, the other half of this podcast. We're back, two weeks in a row. I know we're sort of on a schedule. Yeah, sort of figure it out. Except for that one week, <laughs> that one week where we were just like, nah, uh, yeah, can't be fucked. We're just taking in that, you know, there's still no fucking movies and yeah, wasn't we have to use our brain yeah, to think. It wasn't that we couldn't be fucked, it was just like, just literally uh, nothing. Was <laughs> pretty much, it's just, uh, it's, it's little ideas and you go, yeah, you could spin that into something maybe, but. Yeah, but then sometimes it's like, it's like doing the Dark Knight Rises again. Yeah. Yeah. You look it up on Wikipedia and you're like, oh, there's literally half a talking point maybe. Yeah. And then you yeah. get another Sonic episode. <laughs> yeah. And 20 minute episodes just will not, will not cut it for me. Yeah, so we've been told July 1st, cinemas are allowed to open, mm -hmm. whether there'll be anything playing, they might just go back to when they closed, maybe, mm -hmm. like maybe The Invisible Man, like Little Women, yeah, whatever yeah, was some, out at the time, some last releases, dumped back in. Yeah, there'll be a whole bunch of like, you know, back to cinemas, yeah. see it. That's going to be a licensing nightmare, I don't know how they do it, honestly. Yeah. Oh, who knows? Or it's... cinemas will just be like... Uh, we'll just wait for Christopher Nolan. <laughs> yeah. Wait till the end of July. Yeah, well, it was, you know, because a two week delay, well, we can handle that. Well, yeah. It's already been four fucking exactly, months already. Yeah. Um, They've already fired all their stuff, so. Yeah. I just, I don't know if you noticed, made a bit of an aesthetically change to the. Uh, yeah, to it's the always a here. little bit different every time I walk in. As we can see, I've gone and just thought <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd prop up our Lord and Savior Lee's Invisible Man and above your head. I'm really great. glad you put upgrade behind me. I had to grab it as well. I'm just <laughs> like, nice you know what? Touch. We talk about him so much. He needs to be a part of the of, of our look. So on my first solo episode, I told you this, but the audience doesn't know. I, like my laptop was in front of me yep. recording. And I, I got like almost a whole roll of sticky tape and just sticky tape my upgrade Blu-ray around my laptop. So like the joke was, it just looked all fucked. And it was sitting there. But then the way I had the camera, you couldn't see my laptop, so yeah. the joke was completely ruined. <laughs> yeah, and it would have been a fucking great joke. Yeah, so then I just put it in the background for the rest of the night. Like, yeah. yeah, which is great to see, <laughs> and then it just it disappeared. So now <laughs> it is a full part of the set, as well as mm, the helmet. The White Ranger helmet that my lovely fiancé bought me for our anniversary. <laughs> you will not find a better anniversary present. It's very present. impressive. It is fucking It's a brilliant. very, very impressive thing. I... I love it. I welcome it with open arms. It is now part of my life. It's kind of your first child. Really? Yeah, it, it's definitely one of them. It's in high regards now as something I will definitely cherish for a majority of my life. And if it needs money, I will give to it. <laughs> if it somehow it starts talking, it goes, Dad, I want $20. Okay, go take. Right. You, you saved Angel Grove. Go for it. In a horrible green screen, Transformers. Yeah. Schlock fest. That's okay. Yeah, anyway, so on the topic of there being no movies, yes, uh, we briefly touched on it last week. We just thought we'd talk about Netflix. We got a lot of questions, which is very nice, thank you. So maybe we'll talk about Netflix for three minutes and then just do the questions. Possibly. Whatever. But we have a big list of stuff that we have on we Netflix. Do, so I think so this is going to be a long one. Yeah. But we will get to questions at the end, so... Yeah, you got to put it at the end so people have to listen to the episode. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to tell you exactly when. It's better for the stats. Yeah, no timestamps. Yeah. You have to see yeah, and yeah, listen. No timestamps. It's... it's when it happens, it happens, you know. Maybe we'll do one now. It's good for the know. algorithm. No, at the end, they have to wait. <laughs> they have to wait. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. Netflix. Netflix is the thing. Just going <laughs> to just gonna dive into Netflix as just being, you know, pretty things, fucking things good. Things we've seen, things we've disliked or liked. Yep. It so, is. yeah, Netflix. Yeah. America had Netflix for like six years, and then finally Australia got it in 2014. Yes. I mean, as well as Netflix being around since 1997, but starting off as just a DVD rental company where they just send you out a disc. Like the red box and stuff like that, yeah. Pretty much. So, Moving to fucked. the digital streaming world, and boy, did that just take over. It really did. The uh, viewing movies and TV shows as we know it. I don't know, yeah. Streaming. You could almost say because it. because of Netflix. Yeah, you could almost say that it's killed television. Pretty much, yeah. The TV yeah, is now just the place that you watch Netflix on. Yeah. Yeah, free to air is just like your morning breakfast shows that mm. nobody watches. And then sometimes Family Feud is still on somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that just, yeah, it's still going. It's... Who wants to be a millionaire is still on, but you're like, is this from 1997? Like, is it just a rerun? Who knows? Yeah. Eddie Maguire looks the same all the <laughs> yeah. time. So... <laughs> it's the same guy. 
But yeah, so now, like, even I, I got rid of my TV and I just have a monitor. Mm. Or I just use my laptop for shows or movies. Yeah. So yeah, Netflix completely just... (laughs) Yeah, the I was the same. I never, ran with it. My when I lived with my with my dad, my sisters, and that like my room, I never had the the um the the wall input for your aerial. Yeah, I never had a external aerial. Just played PlayStation or Xbox and just watch Netflix. Yeah, or just got on my laptop with my hard drive full of movies. So. I was I was a big TV guy. Like I would watch Smallville every week. I watched the entire series mm. of Smallville week to week with ads. Yeah, which is incredible. Like if you know my attention span now that's astonishing <laughs> that i did that as a kid like used Maybe to wait for new simpsons like everything like, if anything it's shaped your hatred of movies and tv shows as we know oh, it really has. even as a kid i was like this is fucking rubbish but yeah. i've committed like I have to like why it. have i just seen three minutes of of uh movie time and i'm now getting seven minutes of advertisement yeah yeah we but, discussed it that's how i saw jurassic park yeah that's how i saw most movies really yeah a lot of people deep blue, sea. Deep blue sea was always on that Jaws. It's a bad movie, yeah. Lord of the Rings. Jaws is a good movie. Lord that of the Rings had a few spins. Yeah, yeah. Which is astonishing because that yeah. is a, a week long movie already. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. And then Netflix came along, and you can just press play and not pay attention. Generally, I just turn on Netflix it, and it's yeah. just there. I'm not even watching it. Netflix has really embraced that as well. Like, just with the memes and stuff, they're just like, you're not even yeah. watching. <laughs> Are you still watching? It's just no. there. You're either plowing someone or playing <laughs> video games, like, in the background. That's what, yeah. That's or you're happening. literally, or you've got Netflix open there, but you're watching YouTube on your phone. Absolutely. And you're just going, there's something wrong here, but yeah. I don't know what it is. Because that's the thing, like, the fucking, the burden of choice has come along where you'll just stare at Netflix and you'll scroll Netflix for 20 minutes or something. You'd be like, God, there's so much I have to watch and I want to watch. Yep. And then you'll either put on an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine you've seen a thousand times or just go to YouTube. Like, it, it really is overwhelming going to Netflix. There's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's spoilt for choice. Even scrolling it's, the Wikipedia today for titles, I was just like, holy shit, this is just the licensed stuff? Yeah. The, pe- the scroll bar was like that, and you just kept going. It's fucked. But yeah, it's, it's that. You've got, a, you've got a multitude of choice, and it's constantly being updated as well. Every month, it's, oh, there's, there's a plethora of new things being added to it, and you just yeah. go, fuck, so many things I need to watch, and then oh, I'm the guiltiest for it. There's so many things on there that I need to watch. Yeah. I haven't, because I just go back, and I'll just put on an episode of Big Mouth. Or just put on a comedy special that I've already I seen. Fucking hate Big Mouth so much. Yeah, terrible. Person. Which is crazy if you know my sense of humor. Yeah, like, it's person. so far in my alley because all I do is talk about my anus, <laughs> and it's just like I just. It's, don't if like... anything, is the perfect show for you. Yeah, I know. It's weird, hey. Well, and it's you know you. what? And you know what? Let's just dive straight in. We'll just talk about things we've watched and haven't watched. Yeah, Rick and Morty was massive for it started on adult swim I yeah think. big big but, adult swim thing yeah. and then you know and netflix swooped in and said we'll have that netflix have them big dollar bags and but yeah rick and morty like i've seen all of it and i don't hate it like i didn't feel like i wasted my time but i was just like i just didn't really laugh once like i didn't enjoy it loved it there's a couple of like ants in my eyes john bro you're sitting stuff, on like, pickle rick right yeah, now yeah he's literally in my anus he's... um like, <laughs> ants in my eyes johnson and shit like that it's just like you know you can pinpoint stuff yeah but yeah so tv series is that's how in australia that's how it launched yeah. they were like you're gonna get all the marvel stuff you're gonna get whatever i couldn't really find tv series because i just looked up movies yeah there's uh, like it, there's a few on there and like a lot of things that are a lot of big titles that is like you know as well as being very big in australia big internationally as well but yeah definitely the whole like tv shows was it's was a big focus to yeah, australia well, it wasn't like, really movies because i just googled like what was the launch movie for australia yeah and it just there was just nothing it was just like the defenders is coming like yeah you know, it was like, just sort was of like here's really a list of, of of movies and some tv shows we've acquired for a, a year or so whatever contract they bought the yeah. license for and a lot of it is that yeah we, yeah there is a big section but now it's definitely just a a, a massive library of original stuff as well as you know uh, licenses that they bought to release internationally and somehow crowned it under as a netflix original which yeah. is so spacey to to read yeah it's just like they don't have to spend the money on production yeah 
They, they go, get all the money for that. Someone else, someone else, someone yeah. else made it, and they go, "Look, we'll distribute it like so it's internationally released." Yeah, and go, but we're calling it our movie. Pretty much. And they go, "Yeah, same thing." It's just like, it's like Google. You see ads for Google. Do you yeah. really have to advertise Netflix? Like, well, that's everyone. That's the same with Netflix. like TikTok. TikTok. I'll scroll through TikTok and then I see an uh, an ad for Instagram. Yeah, and I'm going, like, "What do you mean, everyone?" We know what it is. <laughs> like, every, like, big TikTok person has the Instagram links. You are always going to go to Instagram. Yeah. They're doing advertisement for you. And was tell it? me yeah. one person doesn't fucking Instagram. And then, yeah, exactly. And then there was a brief window, maybe last year, maybe the year before, where Netflix was like, they dipped their toe in the water of advertising. They were like, it's only going to be for our shows and stuff, just yeah. a little pre-roll. And unanimously, the world was just like, absolutely not. <laughs> like, this is why we have Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Is to not sit through ads. Yeah. This is why you pay 13 bucks a month, like, to mm. not get ads. Yeah. Netflix rightfully went, yeah, look, well, hey, fair enough. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. We'll just, like, push, revamp the front page and stuff. But the yeah. front page just shows you shit you've already watched or you're halfway very, through watching. Very, I hate that. Very much. Or I go to it. Yeah, I go to it to find something and it's just like, hey, you didn't finish this yeah. Adam Sandler special from... Or, <laughs> or do you want to watch this again? And it's like, well, yeah, I do, but <laughs> I just entice me for something new and it gives you, like, it's, it has, like, the... Whatever's just been released, it has that one big title at the front. Yeah. And it's either going to be something really good or something really shit, and you're going to go, mm, yeah. nah. Always going to scroll past it. Yeah. But uh, back to, like, your TV shows and stuff like that. So they, they did come through pretty hard with, uh, you know, a range of Marvel, uh, Marvel lined up yeah. TV shows. So you had Daredevil. Daredevil was first, and it was astonishing. That first was season brilliant. is fucking unreal. Second season is still really good, and then the third season is also still really good. Was there three of Daredevil? I don't know. I only watched the first season. There was three of Jessica Jones. Because it's me. And three was really bad, and two was not very good. Yeah, I heard that they weren't too great. But they got cut halfway through. Yeah. They got the axe, so... But as it is, you had that, you had... Yeah, so Daredevil, Jessica Jones, you had Luke Cage, you had... Luke Cage was sick. um, uh, The Punisher, which was huge... That's yeah, Punisher did good things, yeah. Because John Bernthal is incredible, and he fits the Punisher. No, he's perfect. So he's perfect. brilliant. He's such a scary man. And they didn't fuck up that show too bad. Um, then you got, yeah, they did their Defenders, so they get them all together. They flopped when they released Iron Fist. Yeah, Iron Fist is unanimously hated. Yep, they're like... Yeah. Nobody really liked the Defenders either. No, that, yeah, that was really sort of like short-lived or anything. Yeah. Um, but when you... You look at the big picture of, like, some of the bigger shows that came out of it, like, you got shows like 13 Reasons Why. Which is enormous hit. For some reason, it's still going, and it's like... I saw the ad for, like, the one, third yeah. season. I'm like, really? Yeah, still, the fourth one just started, going? but it's or the last fourth one. one, whichever yeah. one, yeah. Um, you had the big... Like, what I think is the biggest one is Stranger Things. Well, Stranger Things changed literally everything, because movies were, like, A, the 80s, and B, young casts. Yeah. And it... Chapter 1, go back to our episode last week. It Chapter 1 is the perfect example of that because they literally got one of the cast members as well. Yeah. Stranger Things, yeah, I forgot about Stranger Things. I just completely forgot. Yeah. Like, there's been so much since. I know, I know. <laughs> that when I was looking at the list and Stranger Things came up, I was just like, like it's so ingrained into pop culture. I, I yeah. didn't even think of it. Yeah, it's so huge. Like, oh. They were able to take a cast of these really, really young kids because you go back and watch the first season, <clears> they're so fucking young. Very, very young. And you go, fuck, but that's... good. Very good. That fucking hell. Even from then, good. all of them, yeah. every single one of them, all play really their roles brilliantly. Kickstarted, re-kickstarted David Harbour's career. Yep. Because everyone just loved him. He was like... Because he's, he's just... He was the best. Yeah. He was the best. And, he, and he's like, like... You watch movies from the early 2000s and he'll pop up for like 40 seconds and you're like, that's David Harbour. Yeah, there's some weird ones. There's and now he's like, he's... Because I remember I watched... When I saw Stranger Things and I, and I got into David Harbour hmm. and then I watched... Um, uh, a Walk Among the Tombstones, a Liam Neeson movie. Yeah. David Harbour is the bad guy in this who's basically like a child sex predator. Yeah, right. And I'm like, okay, what? this is fucking weird. Like, he, like he's some of his... Like everyone's favourite dad. <laughs> I'm like, his early stuff is like, he's like fucking kidnapping kids and shit and whatnot yeah. and he's letting them kill and whatnot. I'm like, oh my God, this is so different. But as it is, you wouldn't have known it back then. Yeah. And now, like, two seasons of a show and he got Hellboy, which was really bad, but... But still, still massive. Yeah, and now lead he's, role. he's main support in a Marvel movie in Black Widow. So and he looks amazing. As far too. as careers go, fucking hell, Stranger Things, like yeah, he cleaned it, did well. You had um, and even um, Winona Ryder, like yeah, she came back into the fall because everyone was like, 
Oh yeah, she's really good, isn't she? Like, yeah, she was brilliant. She shoplifted in the early two thousands, and we all just hated her for it. Yeah, like, it makes no sense. Like, celebrities do heaps worse shit now and come back from it. Yeah, Winona Ryder just stole like a couple of shirts, and everyone yeah, was like, "Nah, it was a... fuck it, she's gone." Yeah, she could have bought them, but fuck. Yeah, why oh, would you? But now Stranger Things came back, and everyone was like, "Yeah, nah, yeah," and they just keep board. it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and they're expanding so great, and it's like their story just keeps getting better and better. And... I got. I am currently halfway through episode one of season two, so I'm a little bit behind. Cause okay, you got my, a little bit of catch up. My attention span is just. I can't do shows. Can't. I just yeah, can't. It's do very shows. hard. You got to really like sit down and yeah. just go for it. Otherwise, yeah, you're just gonna fuck yourself. Um, another big one for me was they um, got the license for the Dark Crystal, mm-hmm. um, which was a very early Jim Henson yep. film. All all puppet done. All physical, no CGI. Well, so one everyone thinks know. is Labyrinth, and everyone thinks everyone Labyrinth thinks it's is Labyrinth. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Because I was up. just about to say, oh, David Bowie. I was like, no, that's the other one. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they acquired uh, the license to do a, a show with it, um, still incorporating Jim Henson's work, um, and going with the same companies and all that. I think one of his kids or something that still does like all of Henson's work yeah, and shit. Yeah. Yeah, and same thing made it all puppeteered live action sets everything like that and that was brilliant but again that came out about a year and a half ago and we me and Brooke still have about two episodes left <laughs> it's her favorite okay, it's like yeah. one of her favorite movies and she loved the show and she's just like we need to finish watching it and I'm like oh, I know and then we just don't Yeah, we could just watch it then it's only like 30 minute episodes yeah just can't do it <laughs> um, but yeah like yeah TV shows are just massive on there yeah, they really are. They're the main draw, you yeah. would say. Yeah, you'd say that. As opposed to movies. And then, I guess they just sort of... Then adapted themselves into movies. Yeah. They moved on to the to the movie aspect. So, yeah, not particularly big budgets. Yeah. Mostly. They, for some reason, they gave Michael Bay, like, 400 <laughs> gazillion dollars to make Six Underground, which is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. I haven't seen it yet, but I really fucking oh, want to. Fucking dreadful. <laughs> it's like, Michael Bay is an idiot. I know, but I'm a sucker for Ryan Reynolds. No, oh, Ryan Reynolds I'm sorry. Sucks. I'm sorry, I'm a sucker for him. He's got that, yeah, he's got that problem where he just... Where he's just he's Ryan just Reynolds in every movie? Chris Pratt is the same, yeah. Yeah, I think we touched on that before. Yeah, but, yeah, 600 pounds really bad. Yeah. I don't know why they poured all their money into that. So what about some good movies that you've seen that have been Netflix or So, my, the, first one I, the first one I have to mention is Dolomite Is My Name. Yep. Eddie Murphy's big comeback, sort of, because he hasn't done anything since. Yeah, it was Eddie Murphy, but so. Dolomite Is My Name is, like, a biopic about this dude in the black exploitation era of movies who was just, like, insane. He was he made terrible movies, but he truly believed. He was, like, the Brando of his generation. Yeah. And also, he could do kung fu and, like, martial arts and stuff, but it was all really bad. And Eddie Murphy is just perfect for that role. Yeah. And you have, like, the last, whatever, fucking 20 years of Eddie's, uh, Eddie Murphy's movies, he's just, like, dead behind the eyes and soulless, and he's not having fun. Yeah. But Dolomite is my name. He just explodes into that movie, and he's got the big shit-eating grin, and you can tell he's just having a ball, and it's yeah. like, he's one of my favourite comedians of all time. Yeah. So to see him, like, back in his element, not doing fucking 30 characters or whatever he, he was doing with, like, yeah. Meet Dave and Norbit. Norbit. Yeah. The great movie. <clears throat> Don't mind, it's my name. Yeah. Fantastic movie. Yeah. Um, one of mine is, and it always comes down to horror movies to me, Cargo, which I've mentioned in our horror episode. Cargo has been on my list for a long time. Yeah. I've just never watched and, it. and again, I mentioned this in the horror episode. If you have seen our horror special, go back and watch the horror special. Um, but yeah, it is the the Martin Freeman led movie, uh, set in yeah. Australia in the yeah. outback, zombie movie, and it's just brilliantly done. It's it's not over the done. Uh, it's not sorry. It's not over the top zombie style because it's very bleak. It's very desolate. There's no big crowds it's like you know at most there was like maybe 10 zombies which is so much more scene. interesting than like world war z yeah like, holy shit there's no outlying sort of trying to find a cure there's no uh, there's hordes of zombies coming in here this is like a hey um uh we have our daughter like newborn baby where they sort of have time as if they know if they've been bitten or anything and they're sort of what sort of time time frame they've got to work with until they sort of turn and he sort of like you know the, the the aim of it is like a from point a to point b 
get my child to safety to some extent, either with me or without me type deal. And it's, yeah, it's, it's little things thrown here and there. It's like seeing other people and then getting involved in a sticky situation. It's some people trying to help. It's people not trying to help. It's smaller zombie situations, but it's very, it hits really well. Yeah. And it's, it's a movie when I first saw it, I was just like, yeah, that's, that's a really that's sick a movie. One. And again, <laughs> when you see something in Australia, you just go, it instantly adds a couple of points to your list. You go, yeah. it was Australian, so. Yeah, that's so, one. yeah. So one we both sort of touched on before, but I think we both unanimously like a lot. Mm. Or a bit, because I don't love it, but I do quite like it, is Annihilation. Yeah. Annihilation is one of the most unsettling movies you will ever watch. A fucking strange movie, again, but... Uh, terrible, un- terrible under, terrible ending. Under the label of... Um, one of Netflix's acquired movies yeah. distributed internationally. So very much their name, but yeah, sort of like an international thing. Which but just yeah. really quickly, actually I'll, I'll tie it into my next movie mm. um, on the front, on the topic of them. So Black Mirror was this tiny little BBC show yes. that nobody outside the UK knew about. Yeah. Netflix went, hey, this looks interesting. We can do something with this. Mm-hmm. And then they did the next three seasons. Yeah. Big budgets big cast and stuff really like good. that yeah and you, again unanimously just an inc- fucking incredible show yeah short across like, the board what three four episodes a season yeah yeah but you know very interesting very fucking like very real world yeah like once off episodes mm. it's not an overarching story or anything it's just like hey what would happen if this yeah. and this you know really really scary most of the time really just disturbing uncomfortable yeah very or yeah some of them are just oh my god and then they took a chance with a movie yeah called bandersnatch yep and they were like An interactive choose your movie. own choose your own adventure yeah and it didn't work because the controls like it just didn't fucking work <laughs> yeah it and was also if you were just watching it as a movie as an episode of black mirror it's yep. a really bad episode of black it's mirror. a bad it's episode if you try to watch like that mind-numbingly boring look it was it's very it was very cool the whole interactive aspect to it i found i did enjoy like you know having the choice of of certain things here and there but in the same sense i understand it was very clunky trying to after the third yeah after the third one you would make a choice and then go oh well what's the other one so you skip back and then choose the other one yeah so you never really watched it straight through you were just like well it was and it was also that case of they said there was like you know it was like fucking 30 30 odd different endings that they filmed for it but like i went and tried to find like someone made a graph of saying like this is how you get to each scene and it was just arrows fucking everywhere saying you choose this then this can take you to this and then over there yeah. and you get to get to this one and you look and you I go like that. <laughs> well that's it like well for me to get there i have to go through this whole hour and a half ordeal again yeah. trying to get there so the whole thing was like you wanted to find a new scene to sort of experience so you'd watch up to the certain point and you choose a different thing and then it would suddenly get to a point where it would like like the main guy would die and then it rewinds you back to just before that last step yeah and you're going well, that's, well, that should be the end but it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah so like it was cool in an aspect of they really tried to you know fucking take the ball and go let's just sh- shoot it eyes closed and see what happens yeah and yeah yeah it black mirror is worth an episode just yeah itself, just, just to point out miss bandersnatch yeah. but yeah, just watch the show for what it is because the show is fucking brilliant but and Charlie Brooker's has come out now and he's just said, yeah, I'm not doing another one at least for now, just because the world is actually yeah. just worse than what I could create. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is very, very funny. <laughs> We're in a real fucking episode. Very, but, very funny. But yeah, back, um, yeah, back on Annihilation though, yeah, that yeah, that movie is so fucking oh, yeah, good. Sorry. Annihilation's quite good. It's so good. Kira Knightley. It's just, um, is it Natalie Portman or Kira Natalie Knightley? Natalie Portman. <laughs> <laughs> to me, they're the same, they're the person. same person. They look exactly the fucking same. Yeah. Natalie Portman. But you got that bear who fucking mimics the, oh, Jesus the survivors the bear, cries man. and stuff to lure people into him that whole thing is fucked and then it gets into that house scene and there's no music there's no there's no dialogue yeah. or anything it's just that bear making fucking noises well, oh, it's just like a bear and then it's just got like this like weird ass skull face yeah it's all it. fucked up and, and yeah but that yeah that's a movie that's got an ending that just fucking rattles truly, you truly yeah I don't fucking get it truly horrific visuals I don't, yeah I didn't get it but I was just like, I'm really, I think really I was, uncomfortable. Because I think I was watching it in the car on my way to Ningen one time, seeing Brooke's parents. And 
Yeah, I was just watching like, what the what? fuck is going on right now? I'm like in the middle of a yeah. bush and I don't know what the fuck is happening. And then the, like in the pool and that thing, it's the poster on Netflix, but there's that thing on the wall. like. Yeah. And it's all like, you think it's all growth and stuff of these flowers, but it's actually just like spread out organs and shit. Oh, mate. Yeah, fucked up. Horrible, horrible movie, but really, really good one. Yeah. I want to watch it again, actually. I didn't... I would watch it again. Because I didn't I love it, but I think I would love it. The, the more I think about it, I'm like, hey, why didn't I love that? Yeah. So I should really... Maybe I was just in a bad mood. That day. <laughs> <laughs> Big fucking difference. I don't fucking know. Um, another one of mine is another fucking horror take. Uh, this one's called Apostle. Um, this one is really out there. It's sort of like... A, it's got a sort of <clears throat> mid, Midsommar feel to it. Okay. So it's this... Um, this guy's going to this uh, herd of settlement place so they go by this boat um and they're sort of picked out like it there's little things that happen from the start that sort of like um show you that this settlement camp that these people are going to in this sort of like new religion type deal it's not normal Mm -hmm. and there's something beyond it so this guy's sort of going there to sort of like uh investigate it to see what actually is happening here and it's a whole like cult religious thing it's um there's some uh, uh hidden um deity that they're sort of protecting but then also worship behind but then there's sacrifices there's a lot it's it's horror it's thriller it's gory as fuck and atmospherically it's fucking brilliant there's some weird hints of cgi moments in there that are fucking stupid but <laughs> That's what you get in a good horror movie. You gotta have those little moments. Netflix is very complicit in our horror episode of yeah. saying horror is not great at the moment. Netflix is quite guilty of that. Yeah. Not in terms of them making their own, but it is a dumping platform for these movies. Yeah, hundred percent. It is a well, they can 100% just pump out a quick barren one. tip of these fucking like creep and polaroid and yeah. fucking night of the scary as, as, as we boy on the 13th telephone and <laughs> fucking you're just like jesus Fuck. And, and you go to horror and you're like and you're like all right oh, i hope I, I hope i find like something i would like to watch and you just scroll endlessly through well, all no. these like, because Hansel and Gretel because the issue is like doctors. you see that you, you see the title screen for it but you go but if i click it and it and you're like, the shit. yeah, that's going to be the only like scary bit in the movie. It's yeah. Like spooky Cause ghost sometimes man. they throw in, they put a really good title screen and you go, <laughs> yeah, right. If it's got, if the title screen looks that good, yeah, it should be good. And then you watch it and you go. And there's, yeah, there's those man. ones with like billions of sequels, like wrong turn. This isn't yeah. on Netflix at the moment, but wrong turn had like yes. eight movies and you're like, what? When? Yeah, somehow they just kept going. Happen? He just kept fucking going. Um, but yeah, as you're saying, you know, it's, it's, uh, they know horror doesn't take a big budget. No. So they can just pump them out. They just go... Yeah. And it's going to get clicks because you have bored teenagers exactly. humping in the background. <laughs> the reviews don't fucking matter. People are still going to oh, stand across them and watch them. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But yeah, no, but Apostle definitely was Yeah, so uh, really a movie I was very excited for and cripplingly disappointed by. I'm a big Jake Gyllenhaal fan. Yep. That's no secret on this podcast yep. or in real life. <laughs> so I just suck his ass at every chance I can get. So Velvet Buzzsaw. Yep. Netflix, that is a Netflix movie. Netflix did all that. Trailers looked good. Yep. Turns out it was a weird horror movie, LSD trip horror movie. Yeah, I couldn't bring myself to watch um, it. That was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, terrible I, movie. I saw the trailer and I was like, yeah, now that looks interesting. Yeah. And then I sort of like just dipped off it for the first you know, couple of weeks until I saw reviews and people were like, yeah, nah. Yeah. It's not so, great. Yeah, as soon as it ended, I couldn't remember a single thing about it. It was one of those movies that was just like nothing stuck. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, it's just really bad. Jake Gyllenhaal's fantastic in it because he's Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal saves it. Suck his ass. So, yep. Yeah. Velvet Bites so disappointing. Don't watch it. Cross it off. Cross it off. Speaking um, of disappointing, I'm looking at your list and I see one <laughs> I also have on my list. I think we'll go with that one first. So let's go with the uh, the Motley Crue driven movie, The Dirt. This hurts. Growing up, I had two personality traits, right? Yep. Jackass yep. and Motley Crue. They were my two personality traits. That's all, that's, that's all there was to me. <laughs> so when Jeff Tremaine is doing The Dirt, which is a book I've read eight times because I just fucking love Motley Crue so much. Yep. They're one of my first favorite bands. Jeff Tremaine, obviously, did everything Jackass, everything Wild Boys. 
And then the dad. <laughs> what? What is this movie? It is okay. awful. How did it go so badly? The source material is just rife with interesting stories and stuff, and they picked none of the interesting ones. And you could tell Nikki Six was on set every day going, oh, that makes me look a bit bad. Don't put that in. <laughs> you know, direct it like this so I look a little bit better. It's just like you could tell, like, Nikki Six was just so incessant. Yeah. You can tell, like... You can tell which band member didn't really give a shit about being involved. Like, yeah. Tommy Lee's just like, make sure I look good, like, yeah, aesthetically, because <laughs> Tommy Lee's so fucking vain. And yeah. Um, Molly so, Crew, all terrible people, by the way. Like, the worst people in the world. Yeah, yeah they don't seem like but too But they also wrote Too Fast for Love, so. So, I mean, as a person, like, I'm not, so, mm. I, I'm not a Molly Crew fan. What is wrong with you? I, Are you not even a human being? I'm a human being, Fuck but sake. I'm a human being that doesn't like. They're I've the seen them live. Band who has ever met Look, I've seen them live. See, I haven't, so that's why I still like them. <laughs> See, <laughs> that might change your mind, but they, they were pretty decent live. I'll give them that. They were, they did put on a really good live show because I saw them uh, when they co-headlined with Kiss. Oh, what a night! I know. What a fucking night! But where was I? <laughs> hold on. Shout out to Kiss for being a bunch of cunts. Get this. They played a, like a 24 song set. Can you take a guess of what song they did not play? <laughs> Probably rock and roll all night. No. Nope. Uh, Love Gun. No, I think they're pretty much their main hit that you'll always hear on the radio more times than not. Uh, Strutter. <laughs> no. What the fuck have you heard Strutter on the radio? I don't know. I've heard it a lot on my okay, own. Okay, I was made playlists. for loving you. Oh, that is Kiss, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah fuck. Regardless, probably one of their like biggest singles. That. It was one of their biggest singles in Australia, at yeah. least. Yeah, fucking hell. They did not play oh, it. Shit. My father... Who is the biggest Kiss fan that there is? His only chance to see Kiss. That's them just. I took him to see it. Yeah. He was so excited because his favorite song is "I Was Made for Loving You." He's got the VHS. He's got the cassettes. He's got vinyls. I bought him the pops and everything. He's got Kiss shit. He loves them. For the end of the night, for him to go, they were awesome, but fuck, they did not play "I Was Made for Loving You." What the fuck? But if I pl- paid two hundred <laughs> bucks for what? If you're playing that song every night for 50 years, you're going to do that every now and then. Just like, ah, fuck it. I'm just not going to play it. <laughs> Judas Priest do that a lot too. They just don't play all the stuff you want to hear. It's just like, I know you're 50 years old, but come on. But here's the thing. I then looked at their old set lists. The tour that they just did in Asia, not a week before coming to Australia, they played it. Yeah, they do that. <laughs> and then every night of the Australian tour, they went, what can we cross off? Hmm... Yeah, I was made for loving you, big encore song, we won't do it. So Never gonna play our story love again though, which is the fuck best kiss you. song. But it's too fast and they can't play it anymore, so Because they're old Jewish they fucks. Fuck themselves by writing the best rock song of all time. And that's what happens. So yes, I'm not a Motley Crue fan of any sort. Oh yeah. So <laughs> <You're dead. laughs> So I obviously for me this is sort of taken as I don't know anything about Motley Crue. I don't know much of their backstory, I don't know much of their history, I don't listen to them. So for me watching this I didn't mind it. Yeah, but if you don't know that much about Molly Crew, it's just a boring rock biopic. Like, you're like, oh yeah, they did a couple of drugs and they yeah. were really famous. Yeah. But the dirt is just like some of the fucking things they did was just like, how is any of, how are any of them still alive? How are any of them not in prison? Like, yeah, which are definitely which are definitely things they literally heard. killed another human being. And yeah. It's just like he's still out he's there still doing, good. The, doing just, the celebrity yeah, golf tournament. Very and fat and just fucking you know going for it. But, star Maha. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, um, yeah, I, I didn't mind it, but I, I don't know, it definitely copped a lot of flack for not, you know, sort of staying on course to who they were, but I guess if you want to show that much of what Motley Crue, it probably wouldn't be a Netflix movie. No. Nah. It's going Machine Gun Kelly was also in it. Yeah, he was decent. That's weird. He's, he's probably the best he's part of it, funny exactly enough. Right. Yeah. He played a good Tommy Lee. Good on you. Um, Congrats. So another, another great one for me, I just, I think I probably mentioned before is Triple Frontier. Yeah, you have mentioned that because it's just a fucking brilliant movie. It has shit reviews. Massive cast, but it is a fucking brilliant movie. Good As I've boy. said, it's Oscar Isaac. It's um, uh, Batfleck, Batfleck, Charlie Hunnam, Charlie Hunnam, Someone and else. Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Yeah, that's a great wow. Cast. That's an incredible For an cast. action movie. Wow, very good cast. And these guys just absolutely rip into this um, cartel boss, steal all his fucking money. Batfleck dies halfway through it. Spoiler alert! 
Which that I love. fucking gets smacked in the middle of the head with a bullet from oh, about love. four meters away. A movie killing a big name actor straight away. I, and when I watch it, and I've just gone. Oh. It tickles me every single time. Because it does. It hits you in a way that you're just going, wow, they fucking did it. Yeah, they went. Sorry, man. Like, you're only going to last half the movie. You're out. And then, yeah. But that movie is just, oh. Mm. Dang it, love. Great fucking movie. Sorry, I'm burping. That's fine. (laughs) I'm staying in there as well. Um, And there's one more that I wanted to to mention, which is, uh, it's an international movie. So it's a... So this movie is called Erementari, The Blacksmith and the Devil, or something like that. It's... <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. fucking heard of that. It's a, um, it's a movie set in some offset Spanish country where they speak a language that's only spoken... There. There, and specifically there, and it's a very small place. <clears throat> but it's in Spanish as well. So it's like you, the subtitles are in Spanish and then also this other language that you can read from. Yeah. Um... But it's basically this uh, this blacksmith has actually captured a demon, and there's like this little girl that goes missing, ends up like because this blacksmith like and he's like an outcast, so he's he lives in the forest, and uh, everyone thinks he's weird and shit. And this little girl goes missing. She actually you know falls into his um, uh, where he lives and sort of hurts herself, and he sort of brings her in and sort of nurses her back to health and that. But I think. He's kidnapped her. So they go in there to like fucking kill him and shit. And then they find out there's this demon that he's got captive there. And this demon is like a little bitch. Because like his whole thing was he was supposed to take, um, uh, like the blacksmith like struck a deal with the devil for his soul um, to like get his wife back or something. And they sent a demon to go fetch him. And he's sort of like, nah, fuck you. <laughs> caught the right. demon they just sort of like left him in a cage and this demon just like pleads with him every day and the blacksmith just tortures him every day it's fucking hilarious this demon just like screams and shit and it's, it's the funniest fucking shit ever I'll put a photo very in strange. this of yeah, like what the demon looks strange. like it's very fucking strange but it was like it, it was funny in a way and it was just like I don't know it, it's just one of those weird international movies that for me just really hits because I love international movies and even if they don't make sense, I'll go, no, nah, it's a pretty decent film. <laughs> it's just because it's international. I, as, as, a, as an Australian, I just don't get it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> this is one of those movies for me. So Netflix splashing money around has happened pretty recently. They enlisted the Russo brothers to do all their marketing for them. <laughs> because the, one of the stunt directors of the Avengers franchise made a movie. Mm-hmm. But you wouldn't know that because all the marketing was... From the Russo brothers, the Russo <laughs> brothers, the Russo brothers, of like the whole Russo brothers Instagram. Chris Hemsworth was like, it was so nice to work with my friends, the Russo brothers again. And then Extraction came out and it's just fine. It's an okay movie. Yeah, and no, I still need to watch it. It's very impressive, very technically it. incredibly impressive, but the story is very much, it's not even second hand, it's like 17th hand, just yeah, down here yeah. somewhere. They're just like, ah, oh, fuck it's, it. It's action, so I'm probably going to fucking on. love it. But yeah, the, it tickles my balls. The, uh, the action sequences, the single shots and stuff, just mind blowing. Yeah. But not enough for me to go, yeah, I like that. Yeah. And then my last one is a movie called Horse Girl, <laughs> which is <laughs> uh, Alison Brie from Community and Glow. Yep. She just leads this very, very strange art house movie it's way too art house for me to even understand i'm just i'm just trapped in the in the aspect that it's called horse girl yeah it's like she's a horse girl she's a weird horse girl like the joke of horse girls being very strange in school yep yeah it's one of those and you're like is she strange or is she literally mental spoiler she's literally <laughs> extremely mental spoiler she's just a horse yeah, girl she goes through this just horrible horrible week it's one of those movies that just like following someone through the worst yeah. week of their life but yeah that's it's worth watching just to be like what the fuck is this like yeah i need to watch it again but geez it was such <sighs> a weird movie but that's all i had on my list because yeah i had a couple of those on there like honorable mentions to like the platform um, platform we love which is just you know there's another international marketed netflix Fucking original brilliant movie yeah brilliant shit ending but brilliant movie god such a good movie um and then yeah speaking on the the topics of uh throwing cash around of netflix's big bags of money adam sandler yeah is well, a big deal well that's adam netflix. sandler throwing money around and netflix going yeah fuck it we'll take it 
Yeah. And we'll put anything you crap out onto our platform. Yeah. Um, so basically, because he struck it, he struck some mad deal for like six movies or something. He and struck he a deal made two and fucked off. <laughs> yeah, he like he struck a deal with Netflix like early two thousand and thirteen or something to do four movies. His first one was a ridiculous six, which yeah. was terrible. It flopped like crazy, and then I think the do over was another one. You you would be telling which me, was, I have no idea. Which was him and. Him and David Spade, I think, possibly. There's the one with or Jennifer Schneider. Aniston, Murder Mystery. Murder Mystery. I actually really like that one. I've heard that's quite good. It was actually quite enjoyable. It's actually pretty funny. Yeah. I, I, I would. I give that one. It. I wouldn't not watch it. Yeah. Just... Um, and then it was a yeah, something else in there, and there's, then they. Well, there's the one that just came out, the wrong Missy, which Adam Sandler isn't in, but it is still Happy Madison. Yeah, under so the Happy Madison it banner. Falls, so, so I think it counts because they struck a new deal at the start of the year. For another four movie deal between San and Happy Madison production with yeah. Netflix, um, which cost two hundred seventy five million dollars. Jesus. Yeah. And for the movies he makes, like they don't bust fifty million. Like yeah, he yeah. he takes his friends to a hotel, they shoot everything in the hotel, and then it's all it's all um, whatever that term is advertising product placement. Yeah. So that's yeah. how that's how he makes all his money. He makes these movies incredibly cheaply. Netflix goes, oh, it's Adam Sandler. He will cost a lot. Yeah. So they drive up the price straight away, and Adam Sandler goes, yeah, I, yeah, that's how much <laughs> it will cost. Yeah, that and then he buys all his friends' cars. Right. <laughs> sure. But Adam um, Sandler did say if Uncut Gems won an Oscar, he would make the worst movie of all time. And I'm pretty sure he won some sort of award, so yeah, I hope, he won I hope a we get few. to see that. He won a few. Because um, I think Adam Sandler making something bad on purpose would be really fucking good. He'll probably make it like one of I, his best I, movies. I think he would. He has a very good sense of self awareness. Yeah. People like to shit on him and say, like, what are these movies he's making? They're just holiday tax breaks. Yes, that's exactly what they are. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. He's not an idiot. He's a smart man. He's so he would, like, to make an intentionally bad movie, he would do a great job, I reckon. Yeah, he'd do something. Um, there's just a couple of like upcoming Netflix originals that I sort of stumbled across. <clears throat> so there's currently five untitled Adam Sandler movies to to be announced. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> there's gonna it's there's the already a, a sequel to Extraction in the works. Duh. Yep. Of course. Uh, there's a Hulk Hogan biopic. To, oh, to come let's out. go, brother! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I can't remember if they. Oh, there's like a. Someone rumored to play. Fuck that! It has to be Chris Hemsworth as well. Uh, it has to I think be. it might have been. It has to be. I think it was. He's already built like him. And yeah, he's sort of blonde. And he'd be very easy to chuck on the the, the biker goatee and then just the <laughs> womb broom. Give him the top bold the spot fucking... and then the long. That's called Let a womb broom. Let me tell you something, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, a womb broom. <laughs> a womb broom. Fucking hell! Jesus Christ. Oh god! Um, there's Worst a, thing I've ever said on this show. There's, there's another Chronicles of Narnia movie apparently supposed to come out through Netflix. Holy fuck! Really? Yep. And the first ten goes, <laughs> failing miserably. Nobody wants to watch it. Oh, the game, we're getting another one. So Jesus fuck, yeah. fuck! And then there's going to be um, two untitled SpongeBob SquarePants spinoffs. Because oh. we Steven need more Hillenburg SpongeBob. Died. Died. Like, let him rest. Let I, his work. I want to see SpongeBob die in something. Oh, and just go. Like, you know what? It's Stephen your time. was the nicest man in the world, and they're just shitting on his legacy. Yeah. Anyway, so Netflix, very very good. Thank you for existing, Netflix. Yep. It's the only streaming service I use. Uh, I pay for all of them. So when, I've got... <laughs> yeah, when the boys or the Grand Tour is on, I buy Amazon Prime for the length of that series, and then I yeah. cancel it. And Stan. I just use someone else's logo uh, for use random comedy specials. So I got Netflix, Stan, Disney Plus, the WWE Network, Optus Sport. I have KO, but my brother pays for it. So <laughs> fucking KO God. is incredibly expensive. It's twenty five bucks. I a... know it is. Oh my God! Yeah, you know how many email accounts I've made just to watch the fucking <laughs> Champions League and shit. I'm just like, fuck. I'm not paying for this shit. But yes, Netflix is great. We love streaming services. And now we're going to question time. Yeah, this episode really was just an excuse to do Woo! questions because we, we actually put out questions. Thank we you. put it out early Thanks, everybody. to say, hey, 
ask us some questions for the show, not an hour before we record it. Yeah, we actually when everyone's out doing time. shit. No, we we put it out there. Have some fucking let's 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 dive through and 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 see what we got. Um. So I'm going to start first with um, uh, someone that commented on my post. Uh, this is from Game Fans Instantly on Instagram. Uh, they simply asked, "Want to get verified?" Question mark. Yes, uh, actually, yes. yeah, I would We'd, quite like. I'd love to get verified. Yeah. Um, another quick one is just from my fiance who said, "Can you please show us your favorite pop in the room, Mr. Oldham?" For anyone that really wants to know that question, it is going to be my. Signature, Red Ranger, signed by Austin St. John, the original Red Ranger. Mwah. Love it. So I'm not just looking at my phone, I'm trying to find the post. There we go. Found it. Found it, everybody. Calm down. We're all good. So that is my favourite pop out of most of them, which is basically all my Power Rangers ones. And then you go to our Instagram. I've got a Facebook one while you're loading that up. Uh, let's do Dan's first. My boy Dan. Good day, Dan. How are you going? I hope you actually listen and you're not just... Being a good supportive friend. He's going to fucking have to now because we're answering his question. Uh, we, oh, we should have discussed this actually because we won't know. But what movie do both of you guys unanimously hate? Ooh. Ooh. What movies? Just list off some movies that you hate because there's a good chance. Fuck. I will, I will <laughs> it's weird because if you hate a movie, that's a that's an indictment on a movie. Fucking A. Because you like everything. I fucking love everything, That's why man. the podcast is named what it's named. Um. Fuck. That's like, oh man. We both didn't love Bloodshot, but you enjoyed. I enjoyed, enjoyed Bloodshot elements. just because it's it's an action movie and it's Vin Diesel, so I could tolerate it. So I, I don't hate that movie. Um, just think of movies you hate, and I'll just say yes or no. I hate Twilight with a passion. Yeah, I don't love Twilight. Did great. you like Thor Two: The Dark World? I didn't love it, but yeah. I wouldn't so much as say I hate it. That's nah, one of the most movies ever made. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, yeah, I don't know. We're going to have to come back to you on that one. Cause yeah. Might have to think about that. There's literally that. too many movies. So I've really got to try and scrub through something that I hated. Well, I hated Hellboy. Hellboy the new Hellboy is I fucking astonishingly despise. bad. Like, if, if there was a movie that I would go down to my collection and just throw away, not sell, throw yeah. away, it would be Hellboy. Hellboy is a very interesting movie because every three minutes or so there's just another moment that just go that makes you go how did this get made like, yeah it's dumb like i felt bad for why did they make this like, Del Toro lead, yeah. did two very very good movies yeah ron perlman was perfect they should yeah, just throw ron perlman back and just made yeah, hellboy they were a bit that's cheesy and like the suit looked I a bit weird funny. but that's what we good. had at the time it was 2004 i want to say the yeah, first one was maybe yeah, three something there Close. possibly three early I'm going early. We, we had seen nothing like it. No, it was brilliant. I fucking loved it. They were great. That, yeah, Both they were great. Incredible movies. Just uh, bring back Ron Coleman. Just bring back Ron Coleman. Yeah. Do a Hellboy Spe- 3. That's it. Yeah, David Harbour. Not one of his finest moments. No. Very bad for him. But yeah. I guess, uh, yeah, we uni- unanimously, we had uh, the remake Hellboy. Yeah. That was so, that was terrible. So I asked Adam to go to the Instagram, and I'll go to the Facebook while he looks at Instagram, and he opened the Facebook. So <laughs> I'm back on the Instagram. <laughs> Shut up, I'm Simple task. Um, okay, I'm on the Instagram one. Um, so we're gonna go with um, I believe this is your sister's one, Gemma May Photography. Yes. She's back. Gemma is back with a question. I wonder if she made Jean listen yet. Probably not. It's you, a family affair. You here probably on, got through about twenty seconds and went, yeah, nah. Fiancés, sisters, we got Whatever. it all. Um, so she's asking thoughts on movie remakes, which we touched on this quite a bit. Yeah, it's a broad one because they're usually not great, but... It depends what it is. It depends how, what you do with it. Yeah. If it's just, like, very similar but a bit worse, like a bit stylistically different for no reason. Um, I can't think of any examples. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's... Like, I'm, I'm, all for, I'm all for remakes. If it's something older, I'm all for it. If... Because... It's it, trying something new. Because I'm such a snob, I, I think things are sacred. I think... Remaking the thing was going to be good because they were going to do it all practical again. And then yeah. and then the studio was like, nah, CG is cheaper. It's not cheaper. And it looks worse. It looks worse. And they just fucked it. Um, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake is the only <sighs> movie I've ever not, not finished. It's the only movie I've turned off. Yeah, it's Because I was terrible. just like, this is... Like, but when you fuck with the look... Sacrilege. When you... When you like, fuck up the look of the main character yeah. that's Freddy, when you Freddy Krueger is 
personality. That's what those movies are. Yeah. You, you go to that movie for like funny, not funny, but like kills. Yeah. And you go, you want to hear him cracking wires and no, being funny. Make some quips. Jackie, oh, hey, like, I want to go to his house. I want to find out where he lives and just clock him in the chin and just be like, hey, come on, mate. Why? Yeah. Why did you do what you did? Yeah. They tried, they give him the scary Batman voice because it was the time, like, the Dark Knight was around. So they're like, you have to do the gravelly Christian Bale voice. <laughs> It worked for him. It he worked for you. He didn't wise. He just like he killed. He like skins a dog or something, and then he and like his joke is, I thought he was hungry or something, or like a nice party. I don't know. Like I turned it off. Like, mm, but it's just like that's not that's not funny. Like, yeah. I mean, I guess there's limitations to how remakes should be made. Like, I, I I'd agree in in some of the sacred ones where if something's like either like a cult classic or very much universally loved, don't just touch like, it. Yeah. Maybe. Like, when, when you look at it, I'm surprised there hasn't been a Jaws remake. Yeah. I think Steven Spielberg might have the hammer down on that one. Like, yeah. Like, um, well, Robert, really, Robert Zemeckis with Back to the Future is like, like literally over my dead body. You will have to wait till I die. Yeah. And then even then you'll have to fight my family. But I think it's the same it. sort of aspect of there's been enough CGI shark movies where they know yeah. you're not going to be able to redo <laughs> this. You're not going to be able to make an animatronic sell. fucking shark again and make this pass no. in 2020. No. Not, not going to fly. But yeah, it's just like, yeah, it's not as scary, like scary changes. Yeah. But then you got stuff like, you know, the Dawn of the Dead remake is quite similar to the original. Mm. Just like modernized and Zack Snyder, like he's got a little lens flare here and there. He's got like the nice. Yeah. That's a, that's a great movie. Not as good as the original, but, yeah. no, but I can see why if you put a teenager in front of the original, they'd be like, this is so slow and funny because the zombies are just painted blue a little bit like yeah <laughs> but then i don't know like even friday the 13th it's quite good it's just inoffensive yeah. it's just a fine movie yeah no i i like the remake i think i think the remakes movie. are generally okay. they're never going to usurp the original nah no nah, no no chance the, at all. the best you can hope for is yeah it's pretty good yeah which is unless friday they the unless they actually remade a shit movie and go on you know what we'll take a crack again we'll do it better yeah but then it's just like yeah yeah i agree yeah i'm good with that and now, remakes and now, are okay. Yeah, now we're in the era of soft reboots anyway. You yeah. got, you do Empire Strikes Back again and call it Force Awakens. <laughs> like, yeah. that's not even a knock. Like, Force yeah, no, Awakens just, is very, just, very, 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 very good. Yeah, it all comes back. Yeah, but that's just how they're doing stuff now. Yeah. Blade Runner 2049, it's like, is this a sequel? Is it just trying again? Yeah, it's just, yeah, just bring you more Blade Runner. Whatever. That's very good. So, yeah, remakes. We could do a remake special, maybe. Yeah, I always like say it. we could do these things and we never do them, but <laughs> there's a list, alright, we'll get to them. Yeah, we're, we're going forever. We're no waiting for movies again. to come back. <laughs> <laughs> we promise we better soon. Fuck! Uh, oh, Facebook, right, sorry. Get your facey. Now I fucked up. Um, uh, Shepo, drummer of your band. Yep. Ten years too late. Spotify, wherever you listen to bands. Uh, who's your favourite actor and actress in any movie genre? Mm. mine are quite well known mine I'm very not shy about saying mine okay go with yours Jake Dylan Hall okay and Tony Collette um yep. Adam Drivers sure, yeah Adam Drivers peeking his head over and he's yeah. about to take the top step I reckon one more very good movie and oh fuck we didn't talk about Marriage Story Marriage Story Netflix very good that's right Adam Driver say, <laughs> your biggest thing is fucking Marriage Story <laughs> Adam Driver very good I love him and he's that's very fair. close Ryan Gosling's up there as well because he just doesn't talk in movies anymore. Like Blade <laughs> Runner 2049, he says some things every now and then. Yeah. Drive, he has like two words. Oh, yep. So good. He's very good. Yeah, that's a good And then yeah, Tony Collette just put Tony Collette in every single movie ever from now on because she's the best one. She's just the best one. Fair enough. Um, me, I... Very hard because I'm very so broad on like a lot of my favourite actors and that. Um, I love Jason Statham. Just because I'm just... I'm an action guy. He's hard to hate. He's very hard to hate. He plays the exact same character in every movie. Yeah. He's always bold. He's always muscly. And he's the same guy in every movie. Well, he can't help those things. <laughs> I like... I love Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson, yeah. He's brilliant. Very good. Um, Jackie Chan is my international boy. Yeah. He's yeah. brilliant. Jackie Chan's... Him in his serious movies, like The Foreigner, is fucking astonishing. Yeah. Police Story 2 is one of my favorite. Like, and Who Am I and stuff like that. Like... Yeah, he did silly stuff like the tuxedo, but yeah. if you go and watch his actual... You go watch the his stuff actual he's over in China movies yeah, and stuff, stuff like that. Plus, the it, dude sings opera, man. And you know what? 
Because just go on YouTube and type in like Jackie Chan behind the scenes or Jackie Chan top ten injuries or stuff. Yeah. Like the dude is he's, mental. He's just nuts. He's the he's best. Still, still doing it all himself. Um, actress wise, actress wise a little bit harder for me. Oh, because you hate women? No. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, because it's, it, it's hard to sort of like say an actress that I like for their actual acting ability opposed to just, I think they're drop dead gorgeous. That's, the word, that's marry. worse than what I said. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. They're, they're just at work. Doing I love their Anna jobs. Kendrick. Okay. Weirdly enough, she's just brilliant. Yeah, love her. Pitch Perfect's great. Um, I love, as you know, some one that I really love for her actual acting. Um... <laughs> you're a fucking terror. How are you engaged? When you hate women as much. <laughs> I don't hate women. Don't <laughs> fucking say that. You know how much of a bad a time we're up? <laughs> you not seen the new hashtag out? It's a joke, everyone. Fuck. It's just my sense of humor. I love women. Chill out. You've, You've heard it for 30 people. episodes. Um, uh, fucking, and now I've forgotten her name. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have to fucking do a quick search now because I always, um, Forget this shit. Hold on. I'm getting there. This shows how much I love Great her. Podcasting. Uh, I actually love this woman for her acting ability, so of course I don't know her name. Tom Hardy's close for me as well. Oh, yeah, no, Tom, Tom Hardy's, Hardy's, Hardy's up there for me. Yeah, sorry. Close. He's definitely, yeah. Definitely a big. <clears throat> Even in big Venom, attraction he was quite good. Thank you. I'm not saying Thank Venom's you. good, that's not. Yes! There has to be a fucking trailer for Venom 2 soon. Kristen Wiig. Kristen Wiig's great. Yeah. I Elizabeth like Banks. Remember, Power Rangers, we were very, very positive about her. Yes. yes she Elizabeth fucking Banks. saves that movie. She, something she's terrific. been a lot of stuff she does. Um, she's a great writer as well. She's just very, very funny. And then just honorable mentions just to all the stupid stoners in Hollywood. So Seth Rogen. Um, I love Paul Rudd. Paul Franco. Rudd is, is brilliant. Franco. So Franco's a bit of a shit bloke. He's a shit bloke, but he's a funny actor. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, just the whole cast of This Is The End. Really. Basically, yeah. Gray <laughs> Robinson. Great movie. Um, Danny McBride. Yeah. All those. Sandberg. We love Sandberg. Ah, San oh, Sandberg is God. Yeah, there he is. That's the one. Sandberg. He's my favourite. He's got a movie coming out soon, which hopefully comes to Australia. Palm Springs, oh. which is basically a comedy version of Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. So, the Netflix special was going to be King of Staten Island. Yes. Uh, we were just going to call it a Netflix special. But uh, America hates Australia, and we don't get any media properties ever. So, we have to wait until yep. the middle of August. Yep. Maybe. This is, yeah, it's not a good time for us. It's two months away. So everything yeah. hates us. Um, so yeah, that's, that's our, <laughs> our favourites there. Um, another one from the Instagram from my fiance again is uh, favourite snack while enjoying movies. You know what? I, I'm a green Pringles boy. Sour cream and chives Pringles. Good selection. That's, that's my, I'm a bit of a slut for those. But mm -hmm. recently, there's those, there's flat Maltesers. They're called like Maltesers buttons or some shit. Okay. Fuck me, they're so good. You get like six in a bag. Like, it's the biggest rip-off. Fuck, of course. Oh, they're like so good. They're bag. like heaps better than Maltesers. They're Maltesers. my new thing. Yeah, so good. And they're always at the 7-Eleven, just like right in buying distance. So I just like stock up on it. <laughs> Fuck, everything's in buying distance if you go in there. <laughs> True. You just That's walk a little bit and go, oh, yeah, I can reach it. That's buying distance. Yeah. yeah, but I generally just like, yeah, I'm the worst for like eating as something to do with my hands. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I'm not a fat cunt. Because so I... I I don't snack while watching movies. Really? If I go to the cinema, I do not eat and I do not drink. I fucking love cinema popcorn. I love it. And I come out and my lips are just like inside Disgusting. and like shriveled. Yeah. And I'm just like, that was so good. <laughs> what did you see? I'm like, oh, yeah. And then you're just like, do you know any water? I love it. Because uh, you smack your drink popcorn, down before yeah. the trailers are finished. And I think, yeah. And I think it, it is just the, the experience of going to movies more than the actual like... Because popcorn is just salt, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's just, just salty it's just air. a bucket of salt <laughs> with a bit of fucking popcorn. Yeah, it's just like, well, I'm sitting down and I put a piece of popcorn in my mouth and I remember seeing Upgrade. Like, I just remember being there watching Upgrade. Yeah. So, like, you know, I don't know. It's just like the experience yeah. of doing it. I would yeah. never eat it at home. But it's the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I'll never get a drink from the cinema purely because only at the cinema my bladder goes oh, we're gonna pay you yeah, five gonna minutes if you have a drink it, yeah i got the bladder of a pregnant 90 year old yeah and it's only at the cinemas and it just goes yeah if you have a drink you're not gonna see this movie behind the scenes of this podcast the second adam presses stop record i just fucking yeet myself at this just getting through these <laughs> is such a slog like my bladder sucks man. <laughs> uh, we have one last question from my good friend james who has been a very james is one of those we're gonna review a person James is the the person who 
as soon as anyone meets them, yeah, meets him, they're just like, he's the best person on earth. Like he's just the nicest person on earth. So shout out James if he's listening. Which hopefully, which is. is a good question actually. Which is unfortunately going to turn up. I don't know again. Yeah, probably will. I. <laughs> which movie casts the wrong actor or actress, and which who would you? you put in place? Um. Hellboy, David Harbour. <laughs> no, I would put just... Ron Perlman in place. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that, that, that's true as well, but I also would have just replaced the whole writer's room. Yep. And the director. But you could go back to, like... You could go back to, like, the original Fantastic Four and just be like... You know, what, like... Why is Michael Chiklis <laughs> <laughs> the thing? Like, Get just because he was, like, a fat, bald guy. They were like, going oh, here ridiculous we'll for Michael Chiklis. I think, um... Yeah, I can't... I, it's it's hurting me to say, yeah. but Tobey Maguire <laughs> as Spider-Man. Like, <laughs> where the fucking hell did it? They got this thirty-six-year-old man, and they're like, "Yeah, he'll be a high school Peter Parker." Jesus Christ! Yeah, no. That's so you bad. can go back to bad movies and say that, but like good movies, yeah, they generally nail yeah, it. Good movies, yeah, especially it's... lately. Like, well, you can sort of categorize and sort of say, okay, let's narrow it down to like a Marvel movie. Yeah, Marvel's pretty spot on though. Like. You got characters that don't fucking matter. Like, I'm, like, I'm sorry, Jeremy like you Renner. Could, you could um, all, well, Hawkeye just he doesn't do anything. He sucks. Yeah, like you could almost go back and just say, "Well, they had to recast Hulk twice." Yeah, yeah but that was yeah. Edward Norton is very famously a very shit bloke to work with. <laughs> so that was like, let's get Mark Ruffalo, who is very nice yeah, and yeah, inoffensive. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's just not. Yeah, I don't no, know about just, having to recast. But everyone him. like every. All the Marvel announcements, everyone was just like, what the fuck? Like, a what? Yeah. And then, like, now you can't imagine it as anything else. Yeah. No, I was I like that with Tom Holland. I was like, who's this whiny little kid? And then I'm like, oh, that's Peter Parker. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's he's a whiny little kid. like, uh, who would you want to recast in something? Because it's not like a... You're not, like... We're not going to answer this question in the sense of the movie we've seen. We'd actually want it to be recasted because you've seen it as that person and you go... That's how it I is, know it this It is now. very hard for me to yeah disconnect like that. So it's sort of like you know, is there a is there a role of someone you'd like to see a different person take on? I guess. Fuck, <laughs> that's a very good question. Yeah. And you've sprung it on me. And I, I would like Tom Hardy to not stoop to Venom. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm I, right. Actually, no. That, that okay. That might be one. I think recasting Tom Hardy as Capone. <laughs> in the newest Capone, in the, in the in the new movie Capone, apparently it's really bad. Apparently it's really bad, and I don't think Hardy suits, you know, an Italian gangster boss. Nah. With, as... But he can do a weird voice. He's like <laughs> he, he tends to go for movies where he can do a funny voice. I know, I know, but I, I don't know. I feel like that movie's got to be set for someone different. Yeah, I in, think um, in yeah. something mafia style, like it's got to be. Yeah, like you can get away with having someone yeah. not so big. I think it was just sort of, you know, really while watching that. And we've said it, and we've said this, this is a very big motto of our podcast, if mm. the guy from Power Rangers isn't Miles Morales, in whenever they do Miles Morales, Mor- yep. I can't say it, Morales, they've done a very wrong thing. It has yeah. to be that guy. It, yeah. Like, he, the personality is fucking yep. spot on. Yeah, it's the same guy. So, I would recast that if they've already cast it, and it's wrong. <laughs> I would recast the um, entire Power Rangers um, <laughs> cast from the new one yep. uh, and just make it an adult Power Rangers and get the original Power Rangers <laughs> back uh, Jason David Frank is still up for doing things he likes to play the Power Rangers still I can say John will yeah. still do it the thing I hate about this question is I'm going to be lying in bed tonight and I'm just going to think of the perfect one and I'll be like fuck yeah, no. <laughs> I'll write it down and we'll bring it back next week <laughs> yeah but yeah no I, just, I tend to just like people in their roles yeah or even if I don't like them I'm like okay this is the character yeah, you sort of just come accustomed to it, and then you, you, otherwise you sort of just fantasy book yourself to being like, all right, they did really good, but who else could do something just as good? Yeah. It's like saying, you know, um, who else could have played Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean other than Johnny Depp? Jennifer Lawrence in um, the latest X-Men quadrilogy, they did four of those, right? They did too many that I just... They did too many. But Jennifer Lawrence, they cast her as Mystique when she was not particularly known. Mm. And then between First Class and Days of Future Past, her career fucking skyrocketed and she was like, fuck, I'm contracted into these pieces of garbage. And then, yeah, so Apocalypse, she's like, she's there, but she's just kind of like, I'm not doing much. Yeah. And then uh, apparently in the latest one, they just kill her straight away. And they even showed it in the trailer. They were like, look, she's not going to be in this. 
Like, I'm sorry. I know <laughs> really she's like one. a big draw, but we couldn't afford her. We had to just shoot yeah. her in the face. Actually, that's another one I recast. Ryan Reynolds is Pikachu and Detective Pikachu. Yeah, I've heard that's really weird. Like, it's it, strange. Like, you can't, you literally can't disconnect. Well, because you see, oh, I, like, I watched it. I'm sitting there going, it's just a Deadpool voice. Yeah. And it's and the thing, Ryan you, Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds. Like, it's just the Ryan Reynolds voice. Yeah. But as and it's coming from Pikachu. Yeah. And you go That's on, the thing, he's already an existing like Chris Pratt is being Chris Pratt in Jurassic World, but it wasn't an existing character. You can just be like, Alright, yeah, like this is who this guy is. Yeah. Yes, that's fine. But when it is someone like Pikachu and you're just like, Well, this is just this is Ryan Reynolds like it, You know who would have been good as Pikachu? Jason Bateman. Oh, I fucking hate Jason <laughs> Bateman. He's just a fucking <laughs> in everything. Actually no. Make it Jason Sudeikis. Ah. <sighs> I don't like him either. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just a voice. I don't care. But then he comes... He's real in the end, isn't he? He's like, hey, I'm your actual dad. Jeff oh, yeah. Smith. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's just a really... Apparently the end of that movie is fucking bonkers. I kind of just want to skip to the weird. end and just watch it. It's just strange because like, it's Bill the whole... Bill Nighy is Mewtwo and... It's, it's the whole <laughs> live-action aspect of to Pokemon and they still fucked it up because they made them look like actual nightmares. <laughs> like, it's not fun. Like, when they had... Um, like lick a tongue in it just licking the dude's face I'm just like that just that's, that's not okay Star Wars was there, any, was there any fucked casting in Star Wars I think Star Wars is pretty Fuck. generally pretty good no um yeah Star Wars is fine I mean you know all I'd say is recast um the dude that played Solo in Solo yeah fuck he hasn't done much since has he he was just some random guy and they just went yeah, you kind of look like Harrison Ford, because you, you don't. Would, yeah, you would think that movie would be a platform to launch a career, but yeah. well, he hasn't done much. Because Gambino as um, Leonardo Carrizian was brilliant. Yeah. He had the mannerisms down pat. And he just wanted to do that. He was just like, yeah, yeah I'll just do like, it. Yeah, I'll wear sure. some fancy coats. I'll be, yeah, I want to be in a Star yeah. Wars movie. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. We'll have to come back to that. Cause good question, but Good question. Yeah. We're just... You should know this by now. We don't research anything. Nah, we don't fucking do anything. <laughs> These questions have been here for us to have taken time <laughs> to think about it. We just went, nah. I'm just nah. looking around the room and I'm just like, what can I see? <laughs> <laughs> Not much, but a lot of Power Rangers yeah. and, um, yeah, yep. Uh, uh, yep. Nightmare on Elm Street remake, Jackie O'Haley, who I just want to fucking cut his throat in his sleep for what he did to Freddy Krueger. Fucking remake it and just yep. make it Robert England again. Yeah, he's still around. Robert England's still down for it. He still does all the cons and stuff. Yeah, like, he's just he, like, can, yep. he embraces it, man. What a good guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was all the questions. Yeah, and it was, but we'll come back. We'll come back and we'll um we'll move to our last segment. Yeah, we have a new segment. We're gonna week. have a new segment, which uh, um it's called um Shepo's fucked request corner. <laughs> Shepo's fucked request corner. Shepo has been coming with us with fucked requests. He had a clap competition last week. <laughs> yeah, so apologies to everyone that was listening to the, last week's pod and made it to the end where we uh, had our clap off because Shepo's fuck request of that week was have a clap off and who can clap the loudest? Man, I, I'm on TikTok too much because every time you say clap off, I think of something very different. Yeah. I think of bum cheeks slapping together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on, uh, on Shepo's uh, fuck request... request Corner. For this week, in this corner, uh, he just said, get Adam to do a kickflip. And that's purely because I said, tell me to do a kickflip. <laughs> um, I don't want to disappoint you, but I can't do a kickflip. Um, I try. I wanted to be a skateboarder when I was trying to find my personality. I was like, I'm going to be a skateboarder, and I was just fucking useless at it. So I got a bike instead, and I was quite fine at that. So yep. that's my life. I, I, I did like to skate. I could ollie. Good ollie. That was about it. I, w- I would do the thing where I would set up my camera on like um, uh, like burst mode and I would like ride past it and try to do a kickflip. Yeah. And because it's a photo, no one needs to know that I didn't land it. No. But it made for a good photo. Doesn't matter, yeah. So that'd what be my need? display picture and I'd be like, yeah, I just did like a hard flip. Need that one. And one's like, shot. whoa! And I'd be like, yeah, man. <laughs> need that hero shot. Smooth. So, um, yeah. Catch us next week for Shepo's Fuck Request. Fuck Request Corner. Of the week in the corner, wherever it is. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna try and make a little decoration for that. Just so step can... it up. There it is. Shepard's fuck request. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I gotta let him now now he's gonna let him know. Uh yeah, you're now part of the podcast, so I'm gonna have to put him on the payroll. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a it's a very minimal payroll. When do I get my first paycheck, by the way? Um Been meaning to talk to you about that also. Yeah, yeah. Well um we'll discuss that when you're 
uh, probation periods up. If I haven't been fired yet, I'm never getting fired. <laughs> no, you're not getting fired yet. But anyway. Anyway, I'm hosting this one, aren't I? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks. End it. thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for asking your questions. Thank you for sharing the screenies. Thank you for everything. Do what Thanks you want to do. The interactions are really, really nice. And um, you can even see on the question post, like, I don't know if the public can see it, but we can see it reach heaps more people without even advertising mm. it. It's because when you comment on an original post of a page, it puts it out in the world more because it's yes. like, this is a real page. This isn't bot. Which is very nice. So, to, yeah, anyone, so any, to anyone that can actually just... Share the video once it goes out. Stick on your page. What have you got to do? Doesn't matter if people click yeah, on honestly, it. Honestly, even if you don't watch it, like one of my boys from work, one of the drivers, mm. he was just like, he was very excited to tell me he subscribes. Yeah. And he was just like, yeah, man, I like did a good thing. And I was just like, yeah, see, do you watch it? And he was like, no, absolutely not. But I it subscribe. Doesn't, and I was it like, doesn't matter. Dude. The subscribing is what gets us there. We're on our way to 50 subscribers, which is huge. Which is crazy. Like, which I'm happy with that. Yeah, We're at 33 at the moment or something. It's really good. So, so yeah, thanks for doing a like. We love um, all of you guys. Chuck likes on the video, even if you just click on the video and <laughs> press like. Just, yeah. <laughs> we just got to game the algorithm a little bit. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, just, just sharing spread. it. Like, honestly, you don't have to say anything about it. You don't even have to watch. Just share it. It does wonders because chances are your entire friends list, someone's going to click on it. Pretty much. And probably like it. Hopefully. As well. Hopefully it eventually reaches Lee Winnell as well. Yeah, I tweeted him today and he hasn't seen it yet. But That's all right. He's he'll see. Anyway, it. We're going to be best friends one day. I'm telling you. He's gonna he's gonna be on this couch as well. Don't you worry. He's, he's going to be here. So yeah, you're... just um, stay tuned. We'll figure something out for next week. <laughs> we make our way through it. We'll get there. So thank you for listening. I've been Jack. I've been one half of the You Like That podcast, and I've been Adam, the other half of the You Like That podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.